I start this video with a small story. You are a soccer player. You belong to the best team in the country. Your team wins all the time. Well, when it comes to foot soccer, at least. Because your team also does other sports, but you're not that good in those other sports. But in football, you win. And you are one of the senior members of this group. So you're one of the most respected members. And because you're one of the most respected members, you have some privileges that others don't have. You are left off the hook in many occasions. Then one day, for some reason, you decide, I want to leave this football club or this soccer club. I don't want to pay contribution anymore, so I want to leave. But I want all the privileges of belong to the club. I still want the VIP seats. I still want the uh, discounts on when I arrive at airports. I still want to appear with my name in the Hall of Fame. I want all the benefits of belonging to this soccer team. But I don't want to par participate in the team anymore. But every time the team wins, I do want to get the profit. Because anytime you win a soccer match, everyone is paid. You still want to be paid when the team wins, but you don't want to play with the team. Do you seriously think you can do that? Do you seriously think that that soccer team is going to allow you to get away with such a narcissistic attitude? Of course not! Do you seriously think that the owners of that foot of the soccer team is going to take you serious? You don't want to be part of the team? But you don't want the benefits of belonging to the team? Of course you wouldn't. Yet you have millions in the United Kingdom, or let me just say in that the region we call the United Kingdom because the people aren't united at all. And kingdom, well, let's not call it that because they have no king. They have a queen at the moment, but okay. There are a lot of people over there that have become fanatic about this thing called Brexit. A word that was made up in 2016 to signify the departure of Britain from the states from the states union called the EU, in which Britain would gain back its sovereignty. Now, I already explained on this channel that sovereignty has nothing to do with politics in itself. Sovereignty is when an ethnicity or a group of people want to decide who lives and dies within their own group. So they want the right to kill their own without being being held accountable by other groups. They don't want others to intervene in their in them unleashing their killing energy on their own. That's what sovereignty is. Now, they had a vote in 2016. It was a tiny majority, so that reveals a lot of division. It was only at an advisory referendum, so the British Parliament could could have ignored it or could have amended it. But here's the thing that most people don't even question about this whole Brexit thing. Why was there never a plan ahead of how the future would look like without the EU? None of those Brexit those Leave campaigners or Brexit campaigners, whatever you want to call them, had any plan on how their future would look like. They said things like, they, the EU, need us more than we need them. Get all these narcissistic phrases they shouted around. Call them unelected bureaucrats, all of that. Hold on a minute. There are unelected bureaucrats in Britain that are making dumb decisions and are not hold, hold accountable. Why aren't they dealing with their own unelected bureaucrats? And there are many things in the UK, in the society, that are very messed up. For example, um, the housing crisis, this problem, this rampant problem of pedophilia. There's a lot of things wrong in Britain that the British must face. But instead, it's all the fault of the EU. And now they have this fantasy that the party from the States Union is going to solve everything. What? But here's the thing. They want to leave. They want their will. But they want their will to be val validated at everyone else's expense. So, the fact that you have 500 million, like 440 million Europeans 
who need security after your departure doesn't matter. You just want to leave, you want to leave and also have to take it. But you don't want to have any risks when leaving. So you have a will, but you don't want to be realistic about your will. And not only that, when it became obvious that their will to leave would bring some downsides with it, they blame it all on the EU. It's EU's fault. EU this, EU that. But hold on a minute. If you guys wanted to leave, Wu offered a good plan. There was this TV, not the, was the TV show. Well, there was this TV show in Britain, I believe, like a month ago, which a guy asked a someone a phone caller because people call to the show, talking about all kinds of stuff. And one caller was talking about Brexit all the time, how much he wanted the UK to leave. So the guy that hosts the show asked him, which Brexit plan did you vote for? The guy on the phone couldn't answer it. He kept beating around the bush, but he couldn't answer it because there was no plan. Now ask yourself the following. Who owns the media? The mainstream media, the paying rules of the world. Whom do those politicians worship? They worship the beast. So both those that run the media, as those that are in political offices, they worship the same beast, Apollo. So everything they do centers around Apollo. What is Apollonistic agenda behind Brexit? They worship the beast, right? So everything they do or allow to happen must be in line with, be with the beast. And remember, Apollon Apollonists operate in patterns and cycles. That's how they keep the human population in a state of anxiety. So if the purpose is to keep the human population in a state of anxiety, what better option, what I'm saying, what better policy is there than to offer the people a false escape and once they fall for this false escape, now they're faced with the challenges. But you don't offer them the false escape right away. You, for, for at least four decades, you blame all the problems of the country on an external entity through the media, through movies, so people get used to the idea that that other party is the guilty party. So when people face resentment of things going wrong in their society, they have the option of blaming that external party. It becomes convenient for them, even though it is not right, but people get used to it. So when tensions in the society become so, so, so enormous, what do you do? You then activate this escape mechanism you've you've programmed the people into. The people don't want to face each other in that society, so you offer them the option you can always blame Brussels. For for decades, the media offered them this option. The media often also came with fake news in which they blame the EU for legislations that they don't even exist, or there were local problems in the UK and they blamed it on some EU legislation that never happened. All of this was, was happening, but the people got along with it. So in 2016, the paying rules of the world offered this option to leave the EU. Why did they do it? It is to cause the UK population to become anxious, to become more divided. And once they're so divided, they can't trust each other anymore because the society polarizes. And because they, are, they have a polarized society, they can't cooperate well with one another, and this will cause economic side effects that are harmful. So, the paying rulers of the world, since the day the, the UK joined the European community, they already planned that one day Britain would leave. So, in the media, they sow the seeds of discontent towards the European community and later the EU. Because they knew that after a few decades, those seeds would come, would blossom. So when the time was ripe, they triggered what they've programmed the population into, and many in the population responded in favor of this trigger. But now, because the people have a narcissistic attitude, they don't want to acknowledge they've been scammed. So now they made a choice 
they've been conditioned and they made a choice based on that conditioning but nevertheless they made a choice so if they made a choice based on the fact they were conditioned then they need to acknowledge they've been conditioned that they've been scammed they don't want to admit, admit that so now they've made a choice and now they want the rest of the world just to validate their choice no matter what that narcissism is theirs it's not from the paying rules it's their narcissism so now that they face the challenges of them wanting to leave well now they're blaming the EU, now they're blaming others. And what's going to happen? Soon, when economic troubles hit, which are they are which already manifesting, they will turn on their own people. Because that's what they wanted all along. Sovereignty. Willing whatever they will collectively on their own without anyone telling them what to do. Because under EU legislation, UK citizens could call their own national authorities on account. So, so a lot of Britons don't feel happy with that. They want to will whatever they will. So now they, so now the paying rulers gave them the offer to will whatever they will. And now them willing whatever they will have consequences. Now they want to face the consequences. So now they have exposed themselves. Their narcissism became visible to the rest of the world. Now their incompetence both as a people and as a nation became visible. And because of that they've discredited themselves. On the world stage and now man, many corporations left Britain though to the, uns to the uncertainty so what happened was is this the pagan rulers from the beginning wanted Britain to crash in the future so the day Britain joined the European community the pagan rulers already planned its, its exit and the exit was triggered in 2016 by them triggering the people but them triggering the people was part of their plot all along and the people don't want to admit they've been scammed because they don't want to examine themselves so the pagan rulers use this narcissism of the people against them now this video isn't about whether or not the UK should or shouldn't leave the EU that's not what it's about you need to look at the bigger picture, you need to look beyond this whole Brexit vote in 2016, it was a trap. That's what it was. It was a trap. But people didn't want to examine things. I mean, come on. There must be a clear plan how your future should look like if you want to leave the biggest trading block in the whole world. And that trading block has now become bigger because Japan is included in its relations. And now the British farmers are losing out because they can't easily export their produce to Japan that option is not there anymore because it will leave the trading block called the EU I mean there's so many things that were not told to the British people they've been sold a dream that was based on illusions that was not based on facts but now they don't want to face it the paying rules of the world knew very well that the people over there had narcissistic tendencies so they fed those narcissistic tendencies to the extent that they could trigger it on a later date for their agenda I'm just pointing out the facts here and if you're a Brexiteer come to this channel to rage you're blocked I'm telling things as it is you've been scammed not only the Brexiteers the UK has been scammed both by their own UK leaders as well as the leaders abroad because all the leaders of the world worship Apollo it's one big Greek cult that's what it is if you don't want to see that you're the one complying with the deception that's it now I have used the, the Brexit thing as an example here because it's something that's going on now it's something relevant now look beyond all movements in this world don't just look at the service look beyond it because many of those movements are part of a scam the scam is to keep you in a state of anxiety so you're not able to worship God and obey Christ in order to turn you into reprobate and send you to hell together with Satan and all the fallen angels that's the plot so agree with Christ and be at peace